Welcome to, I don't know what video I'm going to call this, but uh, how to build an urban chicken coop uh, and, and make it what the chickens need in order to live, survive, and, and honestly have a good life. You don't want to have them in a small little coop like a commercial farm would have. You want to have something where they have a little bit of room to roam, but they're still protected. So this video is going to be a little on the long side, but I'm going to go over how we built this coop, uh, how it was put together, the costs associated with it, why we have electric to it, and that kind of thing. So this coop here, you can see the old wood and the new wood, okay? Over in the garden area, I took down one of the fences and I used that wood, that old wood, primarily to build the structure. Now, one thing you need to do is make sure that these guys, these chickens are vulnerable. They don't have any way really to protect themselves. So if a raccoon or a possum or something like that gets in, uh, they're dead. It's that simple, they're dead. So you wanna build it in such a way where the predators can't get in when they're roosting at night because they like to roost on these poles here Okay, just nine elves and dowel rods, and they'll try and get up on these poles. The problem is any predator that gets in can climb up and they can get to them too. So the first things we did is we took this old fence wood, okay, these support poles, these four by fours, two by six, it doesn't matter what it is. As long as it's strong, it'll hold. And I wrapped it in this wire here, okay? So you can see how at the top it looks like it's double wrapped. So basically we made a top and we made a bottom both of them completely wrapped on one side with this thick gauge wire. And we use that to sandwich in between. That way predators can't get in from above and they can't dig in from below, okay? So now we worry about the sides. Now with snakes, snakes are also concerned because snakes will get in there and eat the eggs. Uh, you don't have to worry about snakes so much killing the chickens, that usually doesn't happen, but they do eat the eggs. And you don't wanna reach in and, and accidentally grab a snake because you weren't looking. So on snakes, Anything closer to the ground, you want to use a much finer mesh so snakes can't get in. Okay, that's why this is a smaller, smaller pattern than up here. There are a few snakes that can climb. I've run into a few. That was not a good day. But anyway, so you want to use a smaller on the bottom primarily. Now, my buddy Brett across the street built the actual, let's say, the nesting boxes here. And he gave me a really good layout on this. He used some old wood that he had left over from projects. And he built me these doors. So the girls, they want, when they lay their eggs, they want to be up off the ground a bit, okay? They don't want to lay them on the ground. They want to feel like they're up away from predators. So you want to keep the nesting boxes up. You don't need anything this fancy. This is overkill, but you know, Brett's a woodworker, so it's pretty damn cool. But, um, so you want to just get them up off the ground in a place where they can have a little hay and they can have a little soft place to lay their eggs and feel like they're protected. So it needs to be fairly enclosed and off the ground. That's the two biggest things for a nesting box, for them to want to lay in them, okay? So the nesting boxes are covered. Uh, over here, and I'm gonna have a video on how to build these later, but over here, we just put some fresh dirt in here uh, a couple days ago. Over here, come on in. Inside the coop, I have gravity feeders, okay? Now this is just an easy way for me to throw some food in here from outside the fence area, okay? Because this is all walled off here. It's all walled off there. So I unscrew the cap, toss it in. You, if you build these gravity feeders, and again, we'll make another video on this later, don't fill them all the way up. Remember, this stuff is exposed to the air and moisture and the temperature changes and all that. It will mildew and it will mold up. And if you leave it down in there for too long or up in this tube for too long, you're going to be feeding uh, mildewy, moldy uh, feed to your chickens. So this is just this height, not so I can fill it up and walk away for a month. It's this height so I can reach it easily from the fence. That's it. I pour one pitcher full. Um, those of you who live in my area, when I say a pitcher, it's the same pitchers that Bel Air used to serve beer. Outside of that, I don't know the measurement, but I, I use one pitcher of, of feed usually every day. Some, and usually on Saturdays, I, will, I won't feed them on Sunday. Sorry, Saturday will be the last day I feed them. And then Sunday, they clean them out and they get whatever's left over from that week. And if they need a little bit more, I'll toss half a pitcher in, but you wanna just kind of make sure it gets flushed out. And they do a good job of doing that. So two other things that we added in here. Uh, over here, I have an IR light. That is only in use when the chicks first come out. When they're still developing their feathers and the way Missouri works is we'll have four seasons in 24 hours so you don't know what temperature it's going to be so I'll turn that on the first season never gets used again until I put more chicks out after that they should be able to regulate their own body temperature and there's a lot of uh, anecdotal evidence that suggests you want to let them 
uh, fend for themselves in the winter time to build up their immune system and their strength. Anyway, so there's another little perching pole here, roosting pole, roosting pole. Just give them different heights. Let them kind of walk around a bit. Don't worry about the xylophone. The, uh, the little xylophone down there was just a failed project. I never got her to play a song. Um, and we have a door here. So I come in in the morning. Again, remember, set up. So, so look at how, when you're designing your coop for your home, look at how, how involved you want to be. I didn't want to be that involved during the day. I want to feed them. I want to check for clean water, okay, which would be a different device that we'll put in here later. Uh, and I want to give them room to roam and a place to lay eggs so I can get them and I can walk out. Okay? These are pets in the sense that we take care of them, but they're not pet in the sense of like they sleep with me like my cat. So as you look about around how to build this, try and figure out, okay, how am I going to gather the eggs with minimal disturbance to the chickens? How am I going to feed them with minimal disturbance to the chickens? And in my case, how am I going to give them more room to roam around? So here's what I did. We put a little doggy door down at the end. Okay, you see that? And I ran myself a paracord string and I weighted the other end of it with uh, weights from uh, tires. You know, those little lead weights, they stick on tires to balance them out. And, and I just pulled it completely out. Isn't that great? Anyway, so I opened this up in the morning and if things go well, it doesn't come out all the way. And then I lower it every night because they automatically come back into their, into their uh, uh, roost, into their coop. One last thing, I ran electric here for two reasons. Uh, one, I've got a bug zapper down there on the end, okay? Now what's nice about that is the chickens, if they pay attention, not every chicken has ever found that, but I cut the bottom out of the bug zapper. So as bugs go in, they get zapped, they fall down to the bottom, and it helps supplement their feed that I give them, which is some natural bugs from around the area, okay? I can't really tell you how much it really helps. Um, you know, obviously the chickens were eating them, so I don't really know how much it produced. But when I put it in, I did notice a slight drop in how much they were eating. So I'm hoping maybe about 5 to 10%. And, and that is organic. I mean, these are bugs just, again, in, in the neighborhood. Uh, and I also ran electric. And this is going to be this is gonna be a video way down the road and probably way more than anybody needs to know about. But I had a system in place where I had a 30-gallon drum and a water line that ran out to some little, what they call nipples. And they could poke inside that and water would drop into the cup. The problem with that system is it's exposed, so it would freeze. So I had a heater, heating tape run along it, okay? And I had a thermal sensor here. This is actually a temperature sensor. And it would turn on a switch up here if the temperature dropped below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So that way I knew the water line wouldn't, wouldn't break. We can make that into a video down the road. But you've got, to figure, you've got to remember that at nighttime, especially where we are in Missouri, it can get cold enough to freeze. And if you have a pipe, something enclosed that can't let the pressure of the ice out, in other words, like a bowl is fine, um, you want to make sure they have fresh water in the morning. You don't want to make sure they're drinking ice. But as far as the structure goes or the product goes, a bowl is fine, but you put it into a pipe, it's going to bust the pipe. And next thing you know, you're replacing the pipe all the time. So try and think about that as, as the weather warms up and gets cold every year and all that stuff. Uh, but anyway, that's the basics, the basics um, of my overly engineered and ridiculously complicated coop. But at least it'll give you some ideas on how to set yours in. Again, the, the basics of this coop still exist. Get them off the ground, get them into a somewhat enclosed space to feel safe and protected enough to lay an egg. Okay, give them a way to eat, give them a way for water, and give them a way to play. Get some exercise, and you'll have healthy chickens. That's simple. Otherwise, don't worry about it too much. Everything else will fall into place. Anyway, so this is, uh, I'm going to stop talking now. I've been talking for too long. I can see that, that Michelle's about tired of videoing me. So this is the Urban Chicken Man, and uh, like, subscribe, and all that stuff. And if you have any questions, scan the QR code in the corner. And uh, you can join our Facebook page. It's labeled Cape Girardeau Chicken Clubs. That's where I live. But you can scan that, join the club. We'll answer questions from anybody. Not a problem. Thanks.